Growing up, I didn't know a great deal. I mean, I know we've lived in Venita for generations, uh, have some roots in Adair County. My wife, our first lady, January, did a great deal of research and, and has taken me back to a gentleman named William Wasp. And of course, between me and William Wasp, she's found a great deal. But uh, I, I'm, I'm sensing and learning that uh, there's so much more to explore that can add to all of that research. Uh, and uh, I appreciate your time here today. Now, all of your uh, Cherokee ancestry is on your paternal grandfather's side. Uh -huh. He was Samuel Charles Hoskin, born in Venita in 1909, and he died there in 1996. He was a veteran of World War II, having joined the Army in June of 1942. And I've researched his Cherokee ancestors, as many as we can determine, mm -hmm. from the records. Your grandfather was the last of your direct ancestors to have a clan. Unfortunately, there are no written records for us to review to know what his clan might be. And do you happen to know, through your family, what clan Samuel Hoskin was a member of? I don't, and I'm really surprised <laughs> to hear, uh, it, it at least identified, that he had a clan. And I'm wondering, sort of, what's the basis for, for knowing he had a clan? Yeah. What is that? It'll have to be finding someone who has the same clan as him, a more distant relative than you probably are aware of. Okay. And uh, asking them if they know their clan. I see. Okay. Uh, full blood families generally do pass clans down from one person to another. Mm -hmm. You have uh, four an Cherokee ancestors who were enrolled on the DOS roll. Cherokee census card 3272 is the family of your great grandfather, Ned Hoskin, and his wife, Nellie Adair, or Cahoda was her Cherokee name. They lived east of Venita in 1900, along with their children and her children from an earlier marriage to George Christie. Ned had also been married previously to Charlotte Corntassel, and they had two daughters who were living with their mother and enrolled separately. Notice on the card, the name was likely originally written as Hoskins, but the final S was erased. I can see that. Yeah, it does. That, that happens today. Yeah. <laughs> Ned had attended the Cherokee Male Seminary through the ninth grade. Did you know that? I did not. And he ran for sheriff of Craig County in 1910, but he did not get the Republican nomination. During World War I, Ned and Nellie's son, Ned Jr., was killed in action in France, mm -hmm. and his remains were returned to Venita in 1921 and in 1922, the couple divorced. Nellie died the next year. Here is a codicil to her will that she enacted shortly before her death as found in her probate records in uh, Craig County. Now, both of Ned Hoskins' parents were enrolled. His mother was Jane or Jenny Hare Horskin, whose Cherokee name was Kulstaya. She apparently lived her entire life near Stillwell and she died there in 1913. Now the father of Ned Hoskin was enrolled on census card 7517 as John Horseskin. John was a farmer who originally lived near Stillwell, but at the time of the enrollment, he was living near Afton and was too crippled to appear in front of the Dawes Commission on his own, so his application was made by his son, Ned. This is the first page of the testimony given by Ned on behalf of his father. The use of the name Horseskin rather than Hoskin or Hoskins was likely an intentional misrepresentation by Ned due to the fact that, as we'll review later, John was receiving a Civil War pension under that name. He enlisted in the Union Army Indian Home Guards with that surname which was presumably due to the mishearing of his actual name by an enlisting officer. Now, it appears that you have at least two ancestors who served in the war, both enlisting for the Union in the Indian Home Guard. The man that I have indicated in your ancestry as Chunaluski Adair appears to have enlisted under the name of Chunalahuski Bill, Bill being the name of his father, Bill or William Wasp. Now, we do have access to some of the pension file filed by John Hoskin or Horseskin. Here's John's initial affidavit for a pension. Notice that he indicates he's unable to support himself and that he has rheumatism and uses crutches and is forced to rely on the charity of others. 
The amount received by soldiers who obtained these pensions was originally $8 per month. In 1906, the immigrant Cherokees, those who still lived in the East in 1835, won a court case against the United States, which resulted in a per capita payment to all persons who were citizens of the Cherokee Nation East at the time of the 1835 treaty and their descendants. This application and a review of other records allows us to identify John's parents as Lieutenant Charles Hoskins and Lucy Prince. The Prince surname is given erroneously in the application as French, but that's likely a misunderstanding by an English-speaking clerk who made out the forms. This application allows us to identify John on his enumeration on the 1851 Drennan Roll in the Delaware District, living with his mother and stepfather and he had the Cherokee name of Kanunu, meaning bullfrog. Now here we'll discuss your known ancestors in the East. A census was conducted of the entire Cherokee Nation in 1835, naming the heads of Cherokee families and numbering their family members in age and gender groupings. Conchistachi, or Bill Wasp, lived in what is now Bradley County, Tennessee, as we know from other records, though his name has also not been located on the census. Lucy Prince also lived there, known as McMahon County at the time. Here is her family's enumeration on the census. Now here's two sets of valuations for your ancestors. Conchistachis, which means wasp, real improvements were valued at $709.50. And we might assume that was paid, but this is yes. an application, right? Here, that's, that's the valuation made by the United States Commission. So we think this was on the hands of the United States yes. that this was Yes, Yes, that's okay. what this was gotcha. done. And then, starting in 1838, funds were advanced to the individual Cherokees, and we see here that WASP, listing his Cherokee name, and then someone's written WASP. Now, is this William WASP? Mm -hmm. okay. He got $209.50 on October the 26th, and $500 was sent west for him to receive after removal. Down payment. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, Lucy Prince was the owner of two areas of real estate improvements, totaling $96.50. Notice that her log cabin is indicated as being 13 by 13 and was valued at $15. Now, in addition to her real estate improvements, Lucy received $125 for spoilations. Spoilations were items which were required to be abandoned when removing, such as household goods, livestock, clothing, etc. She was advanced funds at two different times and $112 was sent west to be paid to her after she, she arrived. Now here we should comment on the designation of Lucy Prince, your great-great-great-grandmother. On documents we just presented here, the 35 census and her valuation, she's listed as being half Cherokee and half Negro. This is an interesting and unusual circumstance. She certainly was not considered a slave, very likely because her mother was Cherokee and therefore she was recognized as a member of a clan. And in reviewing her surname of Prince, we find that there was a Cherokee Supreme Court case in 1834 in which a slave named Prince purchased his freedom for $150. I don't think we can say with absolute certainty this is Lucy's father, but I think it would seem to be very likely. Right. And this would have been a court case in, in the in, Cherokee Supreme Court. Obviously, pre removal. Obviously, yes, yeah. just before removal. Wow. That's amazing. And do we know much about that case? Do we just know that the case this exists? This is a transcription for you. It wasn't exactly what we would consider a court case today. Mm -hmm. It was probably more likely a record that was written out and uh, indicated that he was being given his freedom because he was paying them $150. You'll notice Lewis Ross, uh -huh. the chief's brother, was one of the people who witnessed this wow. document. That's incredible. We also have seen that your third great-grandfather was an American named Lieutenant Charles Hoskins. He came from Chowan County, North Carolina, and was appointed to West Point in 1832, as indicated on this document. In November 1836, 
fresh from his graduation at West Point, Lieutenant Hoskins was assigned to take charge of the commissary at New Echota in anticipation of the forced removal of the Cherokee. Now here's a letter he wrote as the commissary officer requesting supplies. Later he was assigned to Fort Cass near the Cherokee Agency at Charleston, Tennessee. This is what later became Bradley County, where we have noted Lucy Prince was living. If the birth date for John Hoskins we have of June 1838 is correct, they would have developed some relationship the previous September or so. Now one of the removal forts just south of the Van House in Chatsworth, Georgia was named in his honor. And it appears that after the removal, he was stationed for a time at Fort Gibson and had two daughters with another Cherokee woman named Elsie Otterlifter. Lieutenant Hoskins was killed during the Mexican-American War at the Battle of Monterey on September the 21st, 1846, and he's buried at Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery near St. Louis. Well, that's incredible, and I appreciate it, uh, David. I'm learning things I didn't know and uh, more details about things that uh, uh, I, I... The I amount of know. information becoming available because of digitization and indexing and spreadsheets has really blossomed in the last five to ten years. Some of the biggest surprises uh, uh, that I knew about but I have more depth on now is mm -hmm. Lieutenant Hoskins uh, and I knew about him but no more now and then of course uh, the revelation of a of a freed slave being yeah. in my ancestry. I mean yeah. I think that's uh, remarkable uh, and it's, it, it's opened my eyes to a period of Cherokee history that uh, uh, we need to know more about, uh, but I know more personally about now, and I appreciate yeah. that.